Hi y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. Thank you for joining me on my channel once again. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for joining us for the first time. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying or do enjoy this tutorial and want to get notified when others are available and go ahead and comment if you have questions. Today we are going to be painting this cozy cabin in the woods. We are going to be doing a fun background, nice and dark with the snow um, in the middle ground and trees in the foreground set all around our nice little cozy cabin with bright lights inside, welcoming any passersby to come in and enjoy a cozy little warm atmosphere. Last, we'll put on some snow to just show that nice falling snow at the end. We'll go over supplies and materials as we paint. Um, right in the beginning, I'll tell you what we're gonna be using, but let's get started. And last but not least, don't forget to also find me on social media. You can find me on Instagram as Shana Searcy, and you get to see a lot of the other um, projects that I work on on a day-to-day -day basis, in addition to announcements for more tutorials that will be coming up. Thanks so much, everybody, and let's get painting. All right, here we are, and we are gonna get started with this quaint little cabin in the woods. I am going to be using some really dark colors today, so we might have to add, or when you do this project, I'm gonna to try to do it in one layer, maybe two, but when you do this project, you can definitely add multiple layers because this is going to be a very dark scene with the exception of our snow and our bright lights inside the cabin. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, normally I start with the lightest color, but we're just gonna get into the sky so that can dry while we work on the other areas. So the sky is the darkest and I'm gonna be using um, indigo as well as black. I'm gonna use actually a lamp black and a little bit of dioxazine purple. And let me just, so this is our indigo. It looks really dark. It might even look black on camera to you. Uh, but it, it is blue and then um, I have lamp black here and I'm actually going to be or I'm sorry I have ivory black here and I am going to be using dioxazine purple for my core palette so these are core colors but I don't normally have them in my full palette I have the dioxazine purple um, but you know I just don't carry I don't have black because I primarily use Payne's gray and neutral tone or tint um, and I don't know why I don't have indigo I love indigo but I just kind of make my own indigos usually with phthalo blue and paints gray all right so we're gonna wet the whole sky area we are gonna work around the cabin okay we don't want any of this sky creeping onto the cabin area so you just have to be careful right here towards the top the only exception is that little tiny chimney that is going to be black in silhouette as well. So if you go over that a little bit, it'll be okay because you're just going to paint that in black over this. You can see I'm painting right over the tree line. They are going to be in black as well, black silhouette. So I'm not too, too worried about them. Um, but when I do my sky, I am going to go from darkest and get slightly lighter towards the horizon but we're painting a nice uh, dark evening sky. There's gonna be no moon in this sky, but there is going to be snow or no visible moon that we can see. We could certainly have a moon somewhere else casting the light on the snow of the roof and lighting up the snow a little bit so we can see it. All right, so it's nice and damp and you can see the difference on camera here. This is no water, this is water and you want it to have like a nice sheen to it, no puddles. This paper, this is a Fabriano cotton paper. This does buckle a little bit. You can see even right here, I'm getting a little buckling. So I'm just gonna be careful with that as I, even though I've taped it down, as I paint on the sky, just to make sure no water sits there in that pool. All right, I'm gonna start with my indigo actually. Woo, look at that, how fun. And look at that just rain down towards the bottom there. So I'm gonna start with my indigo. This is a wet on wet technique. I am then going to actually drop in some black at the top up here. 
So these colors, even though they look super dark as I'm adding them in, drop in a little more indigo, um, they're gonna dry much lighter. They're gonna give me a much lighter version of themselves as they dry, which is why I say do a couple of layers. I'm gonna add in some purple in here, some of the dioxazine purple, okay? And then I'm gonna finish it off by adding lots of indigo. And really, I'm not going for any particular look. And you can see as we get further down here, I'm going to rinse off my brush so we are a little lighter towards the horizon so that these trees will really pop on this. And I'm just letting the wet on wet do its thing. I'm, I'm kind of leaving my brush strokes horizontal. And I did get a little on my snow there, but I'm gonna make that work later. All right, I'm gonna drop in even more indigo up here while it's still damp, but I'm going to get to a point where I'm gonna to have to kinda let it go and let it dry and then assess. And if I wanna put another layer on because it's not dark enough, that's fine. So I'm gonna finish this off. I'm gonna be very careful right around this cabin because that whole roof is gonna be white. And how do we get white in watercolor? We leave it the color of the paper, generally. We're gonna use some bleed proof white later on for some special details of snow later, but generally when you're trying to keep something white, you use the white of the paper. Okay, so that's our sky. I know it looks super, ooh, sorry, camera shake. It looks super dark right now. It's gonna lighten up considerably as we paint the rest of the scene also and um, as it dries. All right, so we're gonna get into the cabin now and then we're gonna do the cabin, the first layer of the highlights. We're gonna do our shadows and our snow and then we're probably gonna start to add the foreground trees while this continues to dry um, and then we'll go jump back to the cabin. So we're gonna be jumping around kind of strategically while certain things dry and we can work on other things. So I'm gonna pick up some, let's see, do I want Diverlite yellow or Nicolazzo yellow for this? Uh, or cadmium yellow. As you can see, sometimes I don't have this all planned out right at the beginning. Okay, we're gonna pick up cadmium yellow. All right, so I'm picking up cadmium yellow it got mixed a little bit with the nickel, but that's okay. It's mostly cadmium. And I'm gonna use that as my brightest. So I'm gonna put a little yellow in there, add water. And these are gonna be my really bright inside the cabin, light coming from inside windows. And then I'm also going to be putting, I'm just gonna put it up here at the top. I'm gonna be putting a light at the top up here. So I just put in a dot of yellow and then I am painting this roof or the, the top of the house here. In this yellow, it's not gonna stay that yellow. It is going to stay a brighter color. But I'm actually just, you know what? Let's paint the whole thing yellow because we're gonna cover it up with browns, but we're gonna leave some of that bright yellow poking through. And we're gonna leave a little dot up here, except I'm letting my sky bleed into it. I've touched it a little bit. Just fine, we'll fix that later. Um, we're gonna be covering up the front of this cabin with lots of browns, but they're gonna be lighter. So it's gonna look like light is on this side of the cabin while this side is gonna be really dark. Okay, so letting those dry a little bit, we'll come back and put in the browns, but let's go to our snow. So snow is, it seems really hard because you're like, how do I paint something that's white? Well, you don't, you, you leave it alone, except for the areas that create shadow. So you would not be able to see shape or form in anything. It would just look like a flat blank piece of paper um, if there weren't shadows in it. So when you look out at a blanket of snow, you can see that there's snow there, but what you're seeing are the shadows the snow creates. Um, you're, you're not really 
the white of it isn't what is giving it shape and form. So we're gonna dilute our dioxazine purple quite a bit here. You know what, I'm gonna pick up a little indigo too to make this a little bit more of a cooler gray. And I'm sorry, you can't see. So this color here at the top, all the way to the right of your screen. All right, that is like this gray purple color, a little indigo, a little dioxazine purple, and a whole lot of water. All right, so as we're doing this, we're just, we're gonna keep this simple. This is gonna be a pretty flat um, plane. We're not gonna worry about the trees because we'll paint right over this, but I'm just gonna start to put in some shadows where there could be some snow banks. So I'm gonna put some under here like right near the cabin. And then you also notice while I'm doing that here on the, um, the ground line of the cabin, you can actually erase that and change the shape of that if you kind of bring the brown into that shape. It'll look like snow. Let me zoom in for you, okay? I'll have to draw it in darker, but you, you don't really have to draw it in at all, but just erase that and then your the brown, when we paint the brown, will come up only to this line and this will leave white and it will look like these are mounds of snow there. And then we can put a little shadow underneath it. And in the background, I'm just gonna put in few sweeping lines here and these are really light you don't have to go crazy you can really just put in one or two and all of this is going to get covered up so I don't know why I'm going so crazy all right let's zoom back out because this is all going to get covered up by trees um, this back here this is fine because this can be the line of a snowbank. You know, the horizon line doesn't have to be a perfect shape. All right, that's all she wrote for snow. These are a little dark here as they've dried. I'm just gonna add a little water, but they're pretty much gonna be darker than the rest, and that's fine. Again, a lot of this is gonna be covered up by trees. There we go. Okay, so our sky is continuing to dry and I can see like this little spot right here is buckling a little bit. Um, and I've just put fingerprints in it. We're gonna let that finish drying and then we'll see about a second layer. Okay, you can use a heat tool so if we weren't recording a video, I might bring a heat tool in here and bring it just to this area so it evens out the drying time with this particular area of the paper. But I'm just gonna let it go and hope for the best. All right, so our foreground trees, these are closer to us and they're not gonna be in complete silhouette. They're going to have some color to them. So, but they're gonna be very dark still. It's a very dark night, they're pine trees. So I'm using sap green and um, some of that indigo. And that's gonna really make this a very dark, dark green. Pine, green, blue. There we go. All right, and I'm gonna use uh, my size four Princeton brush. I just bought a whole bunch of these for my classes. And we're just gonna to start to create our pine tree. Now you can create pine trees hold a bunch of different ways. I like to create those in, um, in a scene like this just by bouncing my brush kind of back and forth and bringing it down in a zigzaggy-ish pattern. Making sure to skip a few little spots. Trying not to keep it robotic. You can use a flat brush for this and use just the tip of the flat brush and kind of bounce back and forth on the tip. 
like to go back and add some color like right to the center where it's darkest. And then I just continue on to make other trees and I don't worry about like where they overlap too much. So I just paint each tree as an individual and they're gonna overlap, but that's gonna create um, kind of a realistic overlapping depth for these trees. I'm gonna make the ones in the middle a little bit shorter. So it's kind of creating this frame around. This one got a little chunky up here. Let's make it a little bit taller. So it got a little chunky in there, but that's okay. Cause you know what? I'm gonna put another tree right next to it and it's gonna look normal. Pick up some more of this color. So these are still really dark, but you can definitely tell there's still color in them. And you can have, with your pine branches, you can have them kind of droop down or angle upwards. These are kind of angling upwards a bit. You could have really skinny ones, really fat ones. So like if I did this one and they're more angled, like they're kind of swooping down, they're he those heavy, which is different than this angle up. So you can have a variety of pines. Coniferous, coniferous, yeah, coniferous because they have cones, they have pine cones. That's how I remember it. Deciduous, the ones with the leaves. Coniferous, the ones with the cones. All right. And you could even, if you want to, like this will be let me just finish this one down here. Like the very bottom, you can kind of see through still quite a lot. If you want to really give this like a vignetted kind of look, like where it's really dark at the bottom, you can even go and like increase the density towards the bottom of the page and just give this a really kind of solid foundation. Doop, 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 doop. Like there's even more layers and more bushes and undergrowth and brush down there. And I'm just dot, 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 dot. I'm moving quickly. You know, I am anticipating, I am looking kind of where I'm going next. And you can stop at any point and just kind of assess. But yeah, if you want this like solid at the bottom, just go ahead and dot that paint in. And then I'm just gonna go back over a few of these, adding in a few darker spots. Give them a little shape, a little form, especially towards kind of the center where the trunk is and where like a lot of the branches come together. And take a little almost straight indigo and add it to a few. There we go. So now we have our ground line of trees that are gonna kind of frame this and then we'll have another set of them that'll be smaller and further away. They'll be at the top, really kind of framing this cabin. This is actually drying okay. Um, I don't love these fingerprints I put in there, but uh, it's getting there. And it's not as light as I thought. I did a good job putting a lot of pigment on there, but um, I could certainly do another layer to really deepen and saturate those colors, but I think it's gonna be okay. And we're gonna add the bleed proof white snow on top and it's gonna make those colors really pop. So now let's get to the details of our cabin. All right, so let's talk about this cabin. Now it is going to be um, the biggest feature or the difference between any of the sections of this cabinet is one, this side is going to have a light above it. So it's going to be casting 
a brighter glow and this side is going to be quite dark and in shadow the roof is going to remain white and that is going to be the snow on top of the roof and you can even see here there's a little edge of white that i'm going to leave there that's going to be snow on this side of the house um, and then this other little room over here this is going to be a darker color in shadow there's not going to be any light in this window so it's going to be a dark window with that being said, I have a couple of browns that I'm gonna be working with. So I have raw umber, which is this darkest, coolest brown. I have um, burnt sienna, which is a much redder, lighter, more vibrant brown. And then this is kind of an in-between. This is Van Dyke brown, which is a little less um, red than the burnt sienna, uh, but still has red tones to it and is a little bit darker in color. So it's almost like it's in between these two. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint the dark side because um, that's pretty simple. It's a straight flat for the most part. Um, we can add in some black details later, but we are going to get your smaller brush or a brush that you have good control with. Remember, we're going to paint around those snow banks okay, and around the windows and under the roof ledge. And if you want, you can go back later with a really tiny brush and do um, window panes if you wanted to, like the little cross beam window panes in these windows, but I'm just gonna leave them like this, I think. Okay. All right, so that's our darker side of the cabin. So you can already see it's setting us up. It makes these windows look pretty glowy. And actually they're quite bright yellow. I might add some warmer toned yellow to those later on um, and to our window out front here as well. Actually, let's do that right now. So I'm picking up some of that. Remember how I was hemming and hawing? I'm gonna pick up some of that Dyrolide yellow. I'm gonna put it, now I still have wet brown over there, so. Ooh, gonna be careful. All right, I'm just gonna take a little water on my brush. Kind of blend that out. So now we have a really warm yellow inside those windows. These guys over here, I really should have waited till that brown dried. So yes, you too can watch all my videos and be as impatient as I am. All right, so we'll let that dry and do any cleanup that we need to do later on. So we have the dark side of our cabin and this roof looks very unfinished. That's fine, we will get there. While this brown is drying, just because I want this edge to be dry enough that I can paint next to it in a different color, I'm gonna take some of my black. So I have that ivory black I was working with earlier and I'm just gonna paint in the little chimney at the top. Just a little rectangle. Nothing super fancy about that. So now you have your chimney at the top of your roof. And then we can paint in um, this little side of the barn as well, or the house, the cabin, also in our raw umber. So it's off to the side. The light isn't really falling on it. We're going to paint it a darker color. We're gonna get right under that roof sill there, or the roof uh, line. And we're gonna let this dry as well, and then I'm gonna paint in this window here isn't going to have any light coming into it. So it's going to be darker, it's gonna be black basically, um, or gray, like a really dark gray. All right, so now we have our the front of our cabin which is still this really bright yellow color and it's kind of blocky looking so i'm going to take my burnt sienna i'm going to find a spot for it on my tray here hold on i'm gonna have to clean something off i think we're done with these yellows unless we feel like we need to go back and add any more but i think we're okay all right so i'm going to take this burnt sienna And I'm also going to take a little bit of the Van Dyke Brown, okay? 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint on the burnt sienna and I am going to kind of do stripes like this up and down over the yellow. I'm not going to worry too much. I'm going to let the yellow peek through. Okay. I know that looks really rough right now. And then up here, I'm going to do them this way. I'm going to rinse my brush off and let them even get a little lighter as we get closer to the top. And again, I know this looks really rough. That's okay. And then I'm going to start to take the darker brown, so the Van Dyke brown, and add it to the bottom here, okay? And you might lose most of or all of your yellow in this. That is fine. And I'm going to start adding it to the bottom and I'm still using those little do 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 spiky stripes because this barn, this cabin's boards are going up and down. Okay, so we're getting there. I'm gonna dry off my brush. I have all this darker color at the bottom. I'm gonna clean my brush off and now I just have, it's, very, it's a damp brush with barely any water on it at all. I'm just gonna to start to blend this texture upward. Okay, so you can see we're getting kind of a glow on this side. And I'm gonna add some of these darker stripes this way to create some texture. And we're not quite done. I am going to add, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm actually gonna pull a little bit of that color out right there towards the middle. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna add in some more texture with some darker brown with some of the, um, oh, the Van Dyke brown. I'm gonna add in some more texture with the Van Dyke brown on a dry surface. But you can see I'm just pulling out specifically like right towards the center of the window, some color. I'm just taking a wet brush and pulling out some color. Okay, so you kind of get this glowy feel. But we're not quite done yet, okay? It's like 80% there. Take this yellow. All right, so let's let that dry and then we'll add in an even darker color kind of around the edges. Pull out some more, oh, that's the burnt, but I won't because that's more work later on. All right, so we're gonna put in this black window here and it's gonna be very similar to the value of the Van Dyke, or the, um, the raw umber, but it will be darker. You will be able to see it. Might be a little bit harder to see it on camera, but. And then I am going to put a little bit of a shadow right on that side and a little bit of a shadow right here along the roof's edge. Okay. And then you could even outline just picking up some more of this paint with my brush. And you could even outline the windowsill if you wanted in a darker brown, the burnt umber color. Or I'm sorry, not the raw umber color. So giving this a windowsill frame, give it a little more depth. You could do the cross hatches in here. You could just do one line across. You can just leave it open. Let's, we'll put in, 
How about one line across? There we go. A little window. Okay, I think this is dry enough that I am going to add. So mostly at the bottom, kind of creeping up on the sides like that. And then just take my brush and blend it out a little bit so we get a soft transition from kind of dark to light. So it looks like, and then I am gonna put in a darker line here right there to show separation. Between the top and the bottom. And give it a little shadow under the ridge here. Okay, so this side of the cabin has a light outside. And this side does not, it's much darker. And even this side over here, you can tell that the lights are off and it's like dark porch area in the cabin. All right, and we have to do our tree line in the back now that our cabin is done. So for that, I'm really gonna use, um, you could use black. I'm gonna use a combination, hmm, I'm actually gonna use indigo, my indigo color. And I'm gonna water it down a little bit, just a little. I'm gonna make these almost like they're in silhouette, but they're far away through the snow, so they're almost gonna be like gray when they dry. And they're smaller, as you can see, than the ones closer up. You can make some look shorter. You can even put like, let's just do the top of one. So it actually can look like they're like going down behind a hill or further away from us. Let's do some on this side. And you don't have to do the whole back line. We can just do a few. Let's try that. I have done ones with the whole back line. But we could just do a few in here. You could even pull some forward a little bit into the snow, that could be cool. I like to give you options, lots of options. And you can definitely deviate composition. That's like the easiest thing to deviate. Like figure out your elements, and as long as you know how to paint the elements, move them around in the composition that feels good for you. So yeah, we can make these like, oh, we'll put like one big one right here, but the rest will be like smaller and behind the cabin and we don't see them. And that's fine. We'll just do a little bit right there that's kind of leading up. So yeah, so now it looks like they're kind of far away. They're a little bit less crisp. They're a little gray. And then, oops. When we put um, the snow on, they'll even get a little bit further away. So yeah, you could put a couple here, like standing right next to your cabin, some like nice tall ones, cause they're you know closer in the foreground. Um, or like a tiny little one over here, something like that, you know, go crazy. Have fun, go crazy. Okay, last but not least our snow and then we can wrap this one up our cabin in the woods um it looks so warm and cozy inside it is currently freezing in my house so as i hunt and peck around my table for my bleed proof white oh. all right the bleed proof white has been retrieved okay so i am running way out of this but it's actually been on back order for a little bit but I think, I try to get it from my local art store when I can, but I order, I think I'm gonna have to order it online. Um, this stuff is great. Uh, 
I use it for so many things that are like just impossible details that would be almost impossible to leave without using something. So your choices are when you have really, really tiny details is to use some type of resist. So you can put down, um, I always forget the name of it because I hate it. Um, You can put down like a masking fluid. So I have like this masking fluid marker, um, which will, you put it on when the paper's still white and then you paint over it. It keeps the paint from getting on the paper and then you remove that. It's like a glue that you remove, but I always have terrible luck with it. I always end up like the one detail I really need to come out crisp and perfect, like rips the paper or something like that. But people are very successful with it. So don't count it out just because I don't like it. Um, and then you can also use like a bleed proof white or something on top. So if you don't care where your snow goes, go for it and just splatter it everywhere. It can be like a really, you know, it's a really snowy day. It can be on everything a little bit. Um, if you're a little more conscientious about how much of it falls on your cabin or your trees in front, you can definitely block things off by just placing down, here's my dirty paper towel, but placing down a paper towel, doing one area, and then kind of doing the other area in a more controlled fashion. So if I did that this way, I've taken my masking, or not my masking fluid, my bleed proof white. Um, I added a little bit of water to it, not a lot, just enough to get it to flow and splatter. And I'm going to take my brush and you can practice this before you put it on your actual piece, just so you know what you're going to get. And I'm just going to start to hit it against my finger and it's going to splatter on some snow. And I am going to, you could leave it like that. I'm going to let some fall on my trees in the foreground. Not a lot. Um, and I don't want it to like fall on the cabin too much because I, you know, a few drops in front, but you can do as much or as little. You can have a whole blizzard going on here. We're just a lightly falling snow, um, which is what we have here. So that is our cabin in the woods, our winter cabin in the woods, um, all ready maybe for um, a nice snowy, you know, New Year's Eve or Christmas day. Um, and nice and warm and cozy inside. Um, definitely, it looks like a nice quiet place to read a book by a fire with your dog and have a very relaxing <laughs> evening. All right, thank you so much for painting with me. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow along. Um, check out other videos that I have up online. Uh, let's take off our tape and then we will go. It always looks better with the tape off. And I've used straight masking tape on this. I don't recommend it, but it's what I had laying around. Right now I usually use a lower tack painter's tape. So if I rip my painting, this is a video on what not to do. All right, I think we're gonna get through it. I think we're gonna do it. Yes, okay. Beautiful cabin in the woods. This could make a lovely little framed uh, picture for a gift for someone for the holiday season coming up. Um, or the front, if you wanna spend this time, you could do this on cards, the front of a holiday card as well. So, or just a lovely painting to add to your decor. All right, thank you so much. Take care everybody, happy painting.